Hi everyone, and welcome to your second video example on the change of variables formula. Today we're going to be evaluating this nasty looking double integral over the region r bounded between the lines y equals x, y equals minus x, y equals x minus 2, and y equals 3 minus x. So how do you start a problem like this? Well at this point you can probably guess. The best way to begin is by drawing your region. So here you can see I've sketched the four lines given in our question, and I've identified R as this parallelogram region in the middle. I'm expected to integrate over this region, but it's not the nicest region to work with. It's not type 1, it's not type 2. So perhaps a change of variables could help me clean this up. Unfortunately, unlike in the last example, we haven't been given a change of variables. Here, we need to come up with the transformation ourselves. But how do you actually go about doing this? We need to find a change of variables from xy to uv that makes this region nicer to work with. Well, nothing is nicer than a rectangle, right? If we can choose u and v to be bounded between constant values, then r will be transformed into a rectangle and our life will be much easier. To find u and v bounded between constants, the trick is to use the equations you're given. If you can find expressions involving x and y between constants, those could be your u and v. So take for example this second equation, y equals x minus 2. If I rearrange this a little bit, I get x minus y is equal to 2. Looking at the parallel line y equals x, if I rearrange that equation, I get x minus y is equal to 0. Ooh, this is pretty nice because the points in the region R are between these two lines, right? So x minus y must be between 0 and 2. This is starting to look like the description of a rectangle. We'll do the same thing with the other two lines. Working with this red line, if I move the x over, I get x plus y is equal to 3. Working with the green line, if I move the x over, I get x plus y is equal to 0. Ah, again, I have an expression involving x and y that's between two constant values. That can be my other variable. Okay, well let's write this down. Let's say that u is one of our variables. Maybe we'll define u to be this expression here. u will be x plus y. v is going to be our other variable, and we'll define it to be this expression. v is x minus y. You'll notice that r has a rectangular description in terms of u and v. R consists of all points where u is between 0 and 3, and v is between 0 and 2. Notice as well that the variables u and v can be seen in my function f of x, y. Indeed, if I rewrite my function as x plus y e to the x minus y, x plus y, do a little factoring up in the exponent, this is exactly u e to the uv. This provides further evidence that our choices of u and v were good choices. They appear in our function and they transform our region into a rectangle. So let's go ahead with the change of variables formula and see if we can evaluate our integral. So here I've got my transformation u equals x plus y, v equals x minus y, and my change of variables formula. You can see I've replaced the bounds on my integrals using my bound on u and my bound on v. I've also replaced my function using expressions involving u and v that we found on the previous slide. The last thing we'll need before evaluating this integral is our Jacobian. Remember, the Jacobian is the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix that I get by taking the partial derivatives of x and y with respect to u and v. But what you may have noticed is that there's a little problem. The Jacobian requires x and y in terms of u and v. But that's not what we have. Here we have u and v in terms of x and y. And often in practice, this is how our change of variables arises, not in the way the Jacobian wants. Oh, so what? Do we have to solve this system for x and y in terms of u and v and then compute the Jacobian? Well, that sounds like a lot of work. In this example, it wouldn't be so bad. Our expressions are pretty simple. But there's a little fact that you can use to get around this. This fact you should keep in your back pocket. It's extremely helpful. It turns out that you can compute the Jacobian the other way. 
using partial derivatives of u and v with respect to x and y. The only difference is you're going to get 1 over the expression you see here. This is 1 over the usual Jacobian. Oh, now that's not such a big deal. We can compute the Jacobian in the convenient way, taking derivatives of u and v with respect to x and y, and then just remember to invert it at the end. So with this in mind, my backwards Jacobian, partial uv by partial xy, is the determinant of partial u by partial x, partial v by partial x, partial u by partial y, partial v by partial y. Partial u by partial x is 1. Partial v by partial x is also 1. Partial u by partial y is 1. And partial v by partial y is minus 1. So I get a determinant of 1 times minus 1, minus 1. A determinant of minus 2. Awesome. This means that my regular Jacobian, partial xy over partial uv, has a value of minus 1 half. Of course, when I plug this into my integral, I'm going to be taking its absolute value. So let's plug it in and see if we can evaluate. So once again, I have my change of variables formula. I've plugged in my Jacobian of minus 1 half and will be taking its absolute value. Notice as well that integrating with respect to u first would involve a product rule. But if I integrate with respect to v, I might be able to avoid it. So let's go ahead and switch the order here. I have 1 half from my Jacobian the integral from 0 to 3, the integral from 0 to 2, of u e to the uv dv du. Next, I should look for an antiderivative with respect to v. That first u term doesn't come into play, so I'm left with 1 half, the integral from 0 to 3, of u, and now my antiderivative will be e to the uv over u, evaluated from 0 to 2. Notice the magic here. I get to kill this u term free of charge. By u, it leaves me with 1 half integral from 0 to 3 of e to the 2u minus e to the 0u du. No more product rule, right? I can simplify this to get the integral from 0 to 3, e to the 2u minus 1 du. I take an antiderivative to get 1 half e to the 2u over 2 minus u, evaluated from 0 to 3, which is 1 half, now I sub my bounds in, e to the 6 over 2 minus 3 minus e to the 0 over 2 minus 0. And if you clean all of this up, what you should be left with is e to the 6 minus 7 divided by 4. As a final remark before we end our example video, remember on the last slide how we avoided solving for x and y in terms of u and v? That was a cute trick, wasn't it? But sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes you can't recognize u and v so nicely in your integrand, and then you really do have to solve for x and y. Finally, I know these problems are tricky and I know these problems are long, but practice makes perfect. Try your hands at the practice problems and let me know if you get stuck.